this has got to be music to your ears. Yes, and again, as a mathematician and a maths teacher, I always encourage more moves to get our young people educated in maths and numeracy skills. But again, a lot of this will be the devil is in the detail. I'm really excited to see what the actual proposals are because more maths is great and I encourage it. And I want to see what shape that will take. And that's going to be important. Is it just GCSE Resis? Is it about personal finance? Is it the practical numeracy skills? How are we going to make sure that we've got more teachers? So yeah, absolutely encourage this move. I want to see a bit more. I want to see the working out of the Prime Minister. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people, Bobby, would, would agree with you on, on personal finance. My mum, I was just saying earlier, was a home economics teacher, teaching kids the value of money, how to budget. That, that's a useful life skill. A lot of people telling us today they see the more advanced mathematics and more obtuse theoretical stuff pointless, but real-world skills, that's that's a great starting point, surely. Yes, Martin. I see. I think it's a balance between the two because we do, as a country, need to educate mathematicians to go on to become our engineers, our scientists, um, and people that work with numbers on a really practical, sort of almost theoretical basis. But the other side, I would say, is much more important because one of the headline stats that the prime minister talked about was that there were eight million adults in England. That's one in two that had the numeracy skills that we'd expect from an 11-year-old primary school child. And that's where I think is the key failing. Because it's one thing having that skill when you're 16, even 18, but 10 years down the line, are you still practically numerate? And I think this is the one thing that makes maths a bit more of a challenging thing to address because you might have passed an exam at 16, but 10, 12 years down the line, when you get your, your mortgage bill or you get like a bank statement, do you understand what's going on? So I think it's translating the math skills and paper to real life numeracy application. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. That is me. I passed my GCSE. I don't know how. And I still am terrified at the thought of maths. But, you know, are there some people that are just beyond saving? You know, some people who just don't take an interest in numbers, don't ever get them, that actually forcing them to study maths to 18 would just turn them off education and actually be a bad thing and a nightmare for teachers like you who have to put up with them. Yeah, and I appreciate your concerns, Elizabeth. Now, one thing I would say is, in maths, there's something known as dyscalculia. It's sort of the maths equivalent of dyslexia, and that impacts like between 2 to 5% of the population. It's about 2 to 5%. So for people with that uh, sort of mathematical condition, yes, you do need to look at more innovative ways of making sure they're not completely afraid of the subject. But for the vast majority of the population, that's 95 to 98%, if I can do my maths correctly, maths is something that they've just built up this worry and anxiety. And again, I've done some research in Cambridge about my PhD looking at maths anxiety. And I think the part of the issue is sometimes when people see a maths problem, they see a bill or they see numbers, they start getting afraid and panicked. And I think that's an education system. Obviously, the exams are there because you need to test people on a day to assess their skill. But in the real life, maths is not an exam. It's something that you've got time, you can use an Excel spreadsheet, you can use your phone, a calculator, you can discuss with people. So I think it's also changing what people think maths is. It's not just a timed exam. It's something that can be collaborative and can be discussed with other people. Mm. Well, Bobby, you, you've got to be the most enthusiastic person about maths I think I've up ever seen. Rishi. Up there with yeah, Rishi. Up there with Rishi. <laughs> but one, one thing where the numbers don't add up, sorry about the poor pun, for Rishi, is that 45% of schools do not even have a dedicated maths teacher. Um, they're having to double up from other subjects. How can we help Rishi to recruit? And how would you get teachers, not just pupils, but teachers switched onto maths? Yeah, I would say this is probably the big, my big concern behind the whole thing. Brilliant getting more people to do and students to do maths. But how do you teach them? You need more maths teachers. And I think this is a long term issue. It's not something that's happened in the last couple of years. It's been a long five, 10, 15 years. Maths has always had an issue to the recruitment. I think partly if you're a maths graduate, you can be easily recruited into like banking, finance, high paid professions. But when people enter teaching, they do enter because they're passionate about young people. So you've got to make sure that one, we retain the teachers because there are some stats like not just a maths, but I think teaching profession, nearly 40. 50% of people who join as teachers leave the profession within the first five years and don't return. So that retention of teachers is really important. And then secondly, making sure we get more mass teachers. And I, I don't know exactly what measures can be done to in, in, sort of recruit more mass teachers. It could be incentives, it could be bursaries. But I think, yeah, yeah. if Sunak wants to get more people into mass as young people, we've got to make sure we've got the teachers to educate them. Yeah.